Like I've said before, finding the derivative isn't always our end goal. It's doing something with the derivative to be our end goal. What we're going to be looking at in this lesson is horizontal and vertical tangent lines. At the end of this lesson, you'll be able to determine points at which a function has a horizontal and or vertical tangent line. First of all, a horizontal tangent line we've already seen. Um, if I'm drawing, say this just function right here, there's a horizontal tangent line. You'll notice there's a horizontal tangent line right here you'll notice the slope of that horizontal tangent line is zero because the slope of a horizontal line is zero. Okay, if a function has a vertical tangent line, if you think of a vertical line, a vertical tangent line would go be going in this direction and tangent line, that slope would, that line would have a slope of undefined. So when we're doing these problems, we'll basically look, look, be looking for where is there a slope of zero and where is there a slope that is undefined. Right, this one says to determine the points, if any, at which the function has a horizontal and or vertical tangent line. Well, if I'm talking about tangent lines and I'm talking about slopes, um, the first thing that we want to deal with, if I would like to find the slope of a function, we're going to actually be finding the derivative of the function. So the first thing that I'd like to do in this problem is to find the derivative. You'll notice the derivative of this one would be 5x cubed minus 16x, and then since 2 is a constant, the derivative would be 0. So this is my derivative. So what I'd like to do is first of all figure out, to figure out if there are any, we'll do horizontal first, to figure out if there are any horizontal tangent lines, we want to figure out will the derivative or the slope ever equal 0. So we'll just see. Will 5x cubed minus 16x ever equal 0? I bet we could figure that out. So what we're going to do is factor out an x. So I'll get um, 5x squared minus 16. And this looks like it's going to get awfully messy. Whoops. How about we change that to a 4? That will be a lot less messy. OK, so there we go. So that should be a 4x cubed. You probably thought I was going crazy there. So now, I'm just going to erase what we got here. Um, now, 4x cubed minus 16x, I could actually factor out a 4x. That's much, much better. So I'll get x squared minus 4 equals 0. Then I notice that this is a difference of squares. So we'll get 4x, x plus 2, x minus 2 equals 0. So there are three places where this horizontal there will be a horizontal tangent line. It will be when x equals 0, when x equals negative 2, and when x equals 2. Now you'll notice it said to determine the point, and we all know that a point is an x and a y value. I've only found the x value, so what I can do now is when x equals 0, let's just plug 0 in here for the x, and when I do that, I end up getting y equals 2. So one place where there's going to be a horizontal tangent line is the point 0, 2. The next one, if I were to plug in negative 2, let's see, I'll get 16 minus 32, that will be negative 16 plus 4 will be negative 14. So my next point would be negative 2, negative 14. And then the next spot will be plug 2 in again, so I'll get 16 minus 32, that's negative 16 plus 2. I think again I'll get y equals 14, negative 14. So the third place where there's going to be a horizontal tangent line is the point to negative 14. So those are all of my horizontal tangent lines. Okay, on the next one, when it says for are there any vertical tangent lines, what I'd be looking for, will that slope, will this derivative ever be undefined? That derivative will never be undefined because there's nothing even in the denominator that might possibly make it um, undefined. So I would just say there are no vertical tangent lines. End of discussion on that. All right, let's try a new example. Let's say I have y equals 2 square root x minus 5. Before I take the derivative of this, I'm going to rewrite it. So let's rewrite it as 2x to the 1 half minus 5. All right, remember we're taking the derivative because we want to figure out where would the derivative equal 0 or be undefined. So we're going to have y prime equals, if I use my power rule, I'll get 2 times 1 half, which is just 1. x, subtract 1 from my power, 1 half minus 1 is negative 1 half. And then you'll notice on this one, the derivative of a constant is just 0, so I don't have to worry about that. Then from here, 
Um, I'm going to rewrite this as 1 over x to the 1 half. And I'm actually even going to go one step farther than that because we know a 1 half power is a square root. So the derivative of that function is 1 over the square root of x. All right, so now we want to figure out, first of all, for horizontal, okay, will that derivative ever equal 0? And if I look at that, when I'm looking for if the derivative is going to equal 0, I'm looking at the numerator, there's no way that that 1 is ever going to turn into a 0. So there are no horizontal tangent lines. Okay, for vertical, we want to look at, will that derivative ever be undefined? And if I'm looking for when a function is going to be undefined, we're looking at the denominator. Would the denominator ever equal 0? And that definitely would be when x equals 0, that denominator is going to equal 0. So I did find a spot. We do want a point, so I do need the y value to go with the x value. So I'm going to put 0 up there for the x. That ends up giving me 2 times 0, which is 0. And if I subtract 5, I'll get negative 5. So there is a vertical tangent line at the point 0, negative 5. So hopefully now you are familiar with finding where a function has horizontal and or vertical tangent lines.